Why isn't Simon condemning him and telling him that he's wrong? <laughs> that face is like, oh uh, gosh, I messed up and now I gotta tell you. <laughs> we see this. Now, this over to the right is... Welcome to the Snipe Life, where we look at creativity through the lens of Christianity. And as always, we're continuing on with all of our all of our episodes from all of our videos from episode seven, um, all of our breakdowns here. And this one's an actual really interesting one. I'm excited to see how um, Simon's storyline is going to play out. Simon and Eden, and of course, Gaius is always mixed into this. And so, really, we're seeing Simon and Gaius play off of each other a lot in this episode. And so, we're going to go through their scenes and see where they line up. Um, this actually begins in a really interesting spot here because Simon is going into the Roman section of Capernaum and he kind of gets lost. I think in my mind, he's probably looking for Gaius, looking for some advice and looking for some help. Uh, someone that he's been leaning on through this whole process with Eden. And so, um, while he doesn't actually tell him what's going on, I think that maybe he is subconscious consciously searching out for him, but who knows? I wanted to pause it here at the very beginning because this phrase, I just looked it up, is actually like a... Um it's like a, a like graffiti, basically, uh, in the Roman section of town. And so this is actually a, a phrase that actually existed uh, during that time. It's not just a random thing that the Chosen came up with. And so it says this. It says, um, if, if only similar swindling would dupe you, innkeeper, you sell water and drink the undiluted wine yourself. So this is like an insult uh, to the Romans in a way. So either a Jew or someone came in here and, and kind of wrote this on the wall, at least is my, is my guess here of how they're kind of portraying that. But it is interesting that they leave this. And this is one of the things I love about this show is that they'll put up something like this and they won't translate it for you. They'll put up and they'll, they'll like talk about different things. Like in this episode, we get certain moments where they don't translate uh, the Hebrew. Right. Uh, and so when that happens, it, it kind of forces you to look up these things and to kind of see more, uh, um, you know, cultural significance of what's happening. The reason why Jews aren't allowed in here, cause they do things like this. They would vandalize the Roman section. They would, um, you know, uh, they were low, they were lower class, you know, so the Romans didn't want them here anyway. Uh, but they would also do these things because they're under the occupation of Rome. They would do things to hurt the Roman society. So this is kind of an insult that's on the wall. It's like graffiti. Uh, but it's an, 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 an interesting way to open up this section with Simon because it shows immediately kind of what uh, Simon is walking into here. Um, and obviously we see as he's in a Roman section here. So we see him walk in. He looks at that graffiti on the wall. He looks around. And the first thing they show us is a woman. Why do they do that? Because her hair is uncovered. She's obviously wearing Roman dress. This is immediately to tell us where he is and what he's doing. So he's in the Roman section. He's not supposed to be here. We know that. And she's kind of looking down on him. Again, another cinema, cinematography moment uh, for us to be shown like, oh, he's he's lesser than, right? Um, the Romans believe they are higher. And, and so this is a very clear like image of, Hey, we're in the Roman section. We're not dealing with Jews right now. Again, we're seeing more white actors, more Roman looking actors. I think this guy to the left looks like the most Roman person I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> His face, he, he has like that long face like Romans had you. What are you doing here, Jew? I, w I was just walking and I ended up. You in don't just end up in the Roman Quarter. How did you get past the guard? I didn't see it coming with me. <laughs> He's in big trouble now. But remember the end of last episode, episode six, we end the episode with Simon saying, why, why, why? And Eden says, you're asking the wrong person. So he's really searching for answers and trying to figure this out. But he also doesn't, he, he hasn't gone to Jesus yet, right? Um, and he's kind of not been there yet. So um, he's not pursuing answers necessarily, but he's trying to figure this out on his own, which is obviously the wrong thing. You should never do that. You should always go to Jesus. You should always ask him for help. Uh, but Simon is trying to be a big, strong man. He's trying to figure this out on his own. He's very angry. And a lot of people can see that around him. He's also shunning all of his friends. He hasn't had a single scene with any of his friends or family or even Eden yet, uh, throughout this episode. And so, uh, you know, this is a hard one for him and he's trying to figure out what's going on. So in his, in his days, in his, um, you know, uh, just fog of his mind. He's walking around and he's, um, you know, 
he's walked into the Roman section, which is not always the best case. So. But real quick before we continue, I want to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Angel Studios. Of course, this is the amazing platform which helped to distribute The Chosen from the very beginning of the whole thing. And they have many other shows on Angel Studios that you can go check out right now. Whether you want to check out comedy or kid shows or really a ton of other things, you can go check those out for free. It's like the free Christian Netflix in a way. So go download the Angel Studios app with my link in the description down below. Low, and this is a great way to support other Christian media that's emerging right now. In fact, you can even finance future projects of different shows that you're really interested in. For me, that would be Testament. This is a modern day retelling of the book of Acts, done in a style of a UK drama. And I'm really interested in that kind of thing. So I actually backed that project myself. If you find other things that you want to back on Angel Studios, then you can definitely do that by downloading the app down below. All right, let's get back to the video. <laughs> yes. What's going on? This Jew somehow got past the gate. I'll handle it. We like can see the difference here myself. too between Gaius and the other Roman soldiers. Gaius is a primi ordine. What does that mean? It means that he is in charge of a ton of Roman soldiers. I think close to like a thousand Roman soldiers or something like that. Um, he's in charge of a lot of different people. So he is a centurion of centurions. So he is in charge of a bunch of other centurions that have Roman soldiers that they are all in charge of. So <clears throat> he um, is a very, very prominent leader now in Capernaum, especially now that Quintus kind of promoted him uh, in season two. I think it was, was it season two or season one that he got promoted? It was season one, wasn't it? Yeah. Season one, he got promoted. So um, yeah, big, big deal. Are you sure? He's nobody. Go to the entrance and make sure Antius is posted there. This never should have happened. I want to know where he was. Yes, Prim. Again, he calls him Primi there, Primi Ordine. Don't talk and ask questions. Do not make a sound until you get inside. <laughs> So here we're actually seeing Gaius's home. This is really interesting because this shows us um, a lot of different things. If we look over to the left over here, we actually see a mural. And let me move my um, let me move my face real fast, and I can show you that a little bit better. Um, if we look over here, we actually see a mural um, that has you know, uh, basically a Roman God on it. And, uh, we actually see this. I think it's this God that we see. Um, this is probably Poseidon. It looks like from, from what I'm seeing, it looks like we have those seahorse like creatures that Poseidon always rides and his daughters, the sirens are kind of all over the place. Um, so that may be what this is here on the wall is a, 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 a mural of that. Um, but we also see other things in his house that we're going to see in a second, which is a very, very big deal and kind of shows his Romanness. Cause remember, Gaius is not Jewish. He is not, um, you know, at in any way kind of related to this whole Jesus thing. Um, and so we're seeing the real, <clears throat> you know, authentic uh, view of who Rome was and, and what these Roman people actually did and what they had in their houses and all of that stuff. So it's going to be really cool to see more of this as we go through. You could have been arrested. What possessed you to cross into our quarter? I'd gone everywhere else. This was the last part of town I thought could distract me, you know? <laughs> the novelty of it. You couldn't drink yourself into distraction? At so let's go back. He says the novelty of it. The reason that he says that is, um, is as we look through, we see this. Now, this over to the right is a shrine of some sort. But who is it a shrine of? Well, it looks to be the shrine of an emperor. It's not Zeus. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like, you know, any of those other uh, <coughs> gods or goddesses that we see. But it looks like this is a shrine to the emperor, which was a very common thing. Emperor worship was basically demanded in Rome and they had to worship the emperor as if he were a god. And so Gaius has this shrine in his house like it's a normal, total normal thing. And and Peter's kind of like amused by it, you know, knowing that he follows the true God. It's um it's amusing to see these things and, and, you know, obviously he wouldn't have it in his house, but to see Gaius kind of play this role of Roman and, and who, and who he is as a real person, it's a, it's an interesting thing for Simon to see at first. 
Again, we see a better look at that mural. Um, definitely looks like, obviously, some sort of god or goddess, um, some sort of god in, in Roman mythology, and he's got those horses. So it kind of looks like Poseidon, but could be something else that I'm not familiar with either. You could have been arrested. What possessed you to cross into our quarter? I'd gone everywhere else. This was the last part of town I thought could distract me, you know? The novelty of it. You couldn't drink yourself into distraction at the hammer? <laughs> what is this? And here we meet Gaius' wife and his son for the first time. Very cool to see this as well. It's nothing to worry about, Livia. But it's not yet the end of the day. I needed a private place to interrogate this Jew who was trespassing. I, I mean no harm. Are you the doctor? <laughs> the, the what? Gaius said there was a Jewish doctor or something that might be able Livia, to... Livia, please uh, furnish this man with one of my cloaks. I don't want any more trouble while I see him out of the quarter. Simon immediately starts to pick up on this. So his wife is saying, are you the Jewish doctor? Who she's talking about is Jesus, right? Not any normal doctor. Because Gaius has obviously been coming home and talking about how um, how this is this is someone who maybe could heal. And so let's see why she's talking about that. If you didn't know, we're actually going to be in Israel if we're not there already in a couple of days. So this is going to be an amazing time for content on our channel. If you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you don't miss any videos. We're going to be posting basically daily and we're going to have daily content basically on our Patreon and YouTube channel members. So if you want to sign up for our Patreon to really help out with this trip and to see all the extra content that we're going to be posting from Israel, you're gonna to wanna to do that. So it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be an amazing trip, and you can actually come with us next year for our 2024 trip in January. This is gonna be another amazing trip, and we have an amazing host that's coming with us as well. His name is Isaac David. He runs a YouTube channel called Daily Disciple, and he is another one of these amazing Christian YouTubers that is just really, really solid. Someone that I trust, and that I've seen do amazing things for the kingdom. So I'm excited about what the future holds, and I hope that you can join us on this next trip. And if you're going to sign up, I would do it pretty soon, because these spots are going to fill out fast if I think everybody's going to sign up that's already talked about it. So we only have a certain limited amount of spots. I'd love to have you on that trip. Make sure you click the link in the description down below in order to sign up for that. Do you know the Jewish doctor? Can he help Evo? Um, Simon, this is my son, Marius, and Evo is our... Yeah, yeah, yeah. you mentioned... Um... The son of your servant. He's my best friend. He's really sick. All right, Marius, that's enough. So we're seeing more of this play out. Obviously, we've definitely confirmed now that Gaius is the, the centurion with the sick servant, right? Um, now we're seeing his family. His son is calling him his best friend. And um, the mother obviously seems to have some issues here. And she's, uh, she's going through some stuff, <laughs> as we're going to see in a little bit. But she gets Simon a cloak so that he can sneak out of here. And Gaius is very, very coy about this whole thing. He's very, very... Um, nervous kind of having Simon here and seeing this whole thing. And he doesn't want Simon to see this side of him. He doesn't want to be that vulnerable to him because uh, he doesn't trust him that much yet. Right. Let's go to your room. Jewishness isn't contagious. Livia. <laughs> Jewishness isn't contagious, Olivia. <laughs> That's so funny because it kind of is, right? Like, not necessarily the Jewishness of it, but the the belief in the Messiah kind of is, right? And so now Gaius is she sees she's starting to see this change in Gaius and who he's becoming. And he's saying Jewishness is not contagious. And she's kind of second guessing that because <laughs> she's obviously seeing the the change in him. That's super interesting. So, he already knows our whole story? Not all of it. We'll take the back door into the alley and sneak you out of side entrance. So he already knows our whole story, not all of it. We are going to see a little bit more of the story, at least, in a bit here. This way. Super awkward. <laughs> and then right here, the reveal of the other son, Evo. Who we, who we saw um, in the trailer for season three. We knew that Gaius was going to be here with him, but now we're actually seeing him in the bed. Um, they are sick, the servant that's sick. Uh, yeah, there he is. Uh, 
and we'll move past that. Obviously, seeing more of who Gaius is is a major, major thing uh, for us. We've been guessing for a long time that Gaius is the centurion with the sixth servant. We've pretty much all guaranteed that right now, right? Um, <laughs> that, that That's the case. And I'm excited to see more of this development. Now, this next scene, I was not expecting at all. Uh, so let's check this out and see uh, see where this kind of goes off the rails a little bit. Really, really crazy storytelling here, but very logical in many ways as well as we find out more about who this who this servant actually is to Gaius and how it all came about. Put your hood up. The next time you need to change your scenery, try a new food, okay? Teach yourself discus throwing. <laughs> discus? <laughs> it seems like you might be the one who needs a distraction. Listen, I am going out of my way to help you. Oh. I'm a fisherman. I can tell when a ship has run aground. How long has it been like this? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. That boy. It's none of your business. Your wife asked if I was the Jewish doctor you told her about. What? You told her about Jesus? There it is. So Simon's starting to pick up on it. He's starting to like get into this and 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 see, oh, Gaius, are you interested in this? Like <laughs> I, I mean, the the boy's been sick for almost a month and he's getting worse every day. I know you're a doctor's guy. You saw the color of his skin. They think less of him because he's a servant. What? It's honorable you kept him on when his mother died. He's not just a servant. Yeah, your son said they were best friends. It's like, it's like having a brother. I understand. They are. <laughs> that face that face right here is so funny to me <laughs> this face not just a servant yeah, your son said they were best friends it's like it's like having a brother i understand they are <laughs> that face is like oh uh, gosh i messed up and now i gotta tell you <laughs> so this kid is gaius's son so he has two half sons here. Um, well, he had two sons of his, obviously, but they're half brothers. Um, and so one of, one of them uh, is him and his wife that we has now, and one of them is from a servant that they had before. Now this brings to, to question: Did the mother actually die from childbirth, or did she die from, you know, uh, it, like? something else like maybe she got taken away or something else because of Gaius's relationship with her um I'm pretty sure she did just die from childbirth or, or whatever else happened there um but yeah it, this brings in so many questions obviously it brings in the Romanness of Gaius as a whole this is a more common thing in, in Roman society for sure there was a lot of promiscuity um a lot of different things homosexuality or um you know different things that happened in the Roman um, Empire and so there's a lot of this kind of going on I mean if we look at places like um you know uh like Pompeii you can see the culture during during that period where um you know it was very sexualized and, and a lot of different things were happening there and so for Gaius to have this it's not uncommon and especially you know someone that's coming from a religious platform where this is very accepted and and, and normalized in a lot of ways uh and so of course this would be a, a very normal thing for Gaius but he's starting to realize some of these other things that are coming into play and how he might be at fault here um, obviously it's still going to create turmoil you can't just live in that life and everybody's cool with it and everybody's okay <clears throat> when you start walking in that there's always things that fall apart um, you know when you have two wives or these different things happen there's always things that fall apart and hard things start to happen um, arguments become even more uh, intense and eventually there's going to become jealousy and different things that come into play. And so, of course, it's going to end up falling apart eventually. Half-brothers. Does she know? Well, uh, we, we don't talk about it. Um, you know, for Roman men, it is a more common thing. 
So she knows, but they don't talk about it. And he's he's making the excuse, you know, it's a more common thing. Common for lots of men. It's just it's more accepted in your culture. Yeah. Just spare me the sermon, okay? I'm not judging. Again, Gaius isn't Jewish, right? Why isn't Simon condemning him and telling him that he's wrong? Because Gaius isn't Jewish. He's not a follower of Christ. He is a non-believer at this moment. And so as we look at Simon, like he's he's not in the position to correct him. They're not friends, right? They're not brothers in Christ. They're not uh, followers of Jesus together. So it's a completely different thing. It's like if I ran into, you know, um, if I ran into at some store and was like yelling at someone for cheating on their wife or something like I would have no place to do that. Right. Unless they were my brother and sister in Christ. And I had the, um, the ability to kind of talk to them through that and walk with them through the process. It's completely different here. Simon doesn't have that right. Um, and Gaius is not a follower or a believer. So it's, it's a totally different thing here. I not feel guilty about it at the time, but lately I do regret my actions and now he's sick and I, uh, I can no longer pretend that he's not my son, and neither can she. Yeah. Silence between the husband and wife, it's poison. Right? <laughs> the longer you don't say something, the worse it gets, trust me. Huh? Yeah, trust me, Simon's going through that right now, right? Eden was quiet for, for the longest time as, as he got home, and so now it's created even more issues than if she had just opened up right when he got home. Um, and of course, we've talked about this a lot. Both Simon and Eden did things wrong in this, but Simon didn't have the information needed in order to deal with the situation at all. And so now he's overwhelmed with emotion. Not only did this bad thing happen to Eden with the, with the miscarriage, but also his wife like kind of lied to him and, and let him off on the hook and let him think that he was doing all these things wrong um, when in actuality that was not the case. And so, um, yeah, there's some hard, hard stuff to go through here. I do not. You trust me enough. Stick to your side of the street, Simon. Fine. Shalom, shalom, guys. Why do you say it twice? Well, once means peace. Twice means perfect peace. Complete wholeness. Yeah. Well, that'll be the day. <laughs> Both of them are longing for this wholeness. So like Simon's saying, shalom, shalom means perfect peace. It means wholeness. And that's what Christ is bringing. He is bringing perfect peace. He didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. And that sword is going to bring perfect peace to all of us, right? Um, at some point. And so that is what Christ is trying to achieve. He's trying to achieve this wholeness, not just within ourselves, but with God so that we can again be walking with him and listening to him and obeying him um, and really ordering the relationship that God created everything to have in the first place. And so Gaius, you know, subconsciously, he wants that as well. He wants to be whole. He wants that perfect peace. And he says, he says that will be the day. And he's, he's, he's longing for that. He's longing for the day when he's not fighting against Quintus and wanting to help these people when he's not, you know, having this son who is, who is sick and, and, and in need of something to, to help him. And so here we're seeing as all these things are happening, but Simon can't even get to the point where he's like, okay, go to Jesus then, because he knows that Gaius one is not a believer, but two, he's dealing with his own stuff right now. Just like Eden was in episode four, when she met Veronica she could have said, oh, you can come to Jesus right now. He's at my house. Um, <laughs> but she didn't. She didn't do that because she's stuck in her own stuff and she was letting all of that distract her from bringing people to Jesus in the first place. Um, really, really difficult when you're drowning in your own kind of grief and sorrow and sin uh, to bring other people into uh, Jesus, right? So uh, obviously that's kind of what Simon's going through here. It is really interesting to see the Roman culture and more of Roman society kind of bleed into someone that we now care about in Gaius. We've cared about Gaius since season one, and so now we're seeing more of who he is and seeing the sinful nature of the Roman people kind of lived out in him rather than someone that we dislike, like Pilate or Quintus. Um, and so it's harder kind of seeing that. So again, the writing is impeccable here. Really, really well done with Gaius. Um, 
and interesting to see how he's going to transform from coming from this person who is a non-believer and, you know, sleeping with his servant and having this child to then eventually being the person who has more faith than anybody in Israel. That's how we're going to see it, in, at least in Scripture. That's how, it, that's how it's phrased. This centurion, comes to, or de, this centurion sends someone to Jesus in order to say, hey, I know that you can heal my servant even if you're far away. Even, you don't even have to come to my house. I know if you say it, it'll be done. And, and Jesus says, in, not in all of Israel have I seen faith like this. Um, and so even, in the, even more than the apostles, even more than anybody else, he has faith. Um, and we, we're starting to see that build a little bit in Gaius but not obviously a ton. So I'm excited to see where that, where that lands with him um, and, and what happens as we see further seasons. Cause I don't think that's that his servant's going to be healed this season. I think it'll probably be next season when his servant is healed, but we're seeing the setup for that here. Um, and I wonder how that relationship with his wife is going to be. All of that is really um, something that could be delved into in the future. So I'm interested to see that. Thanks for checking out this video. This is actually a small portion of a much larger live stream that we did talking all about this episode and breaking everything down. So if you want to see that full live stream with no cuts or any edits or anything, you can go and see that over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the snipe life. This is the best possible way that you can actually support us in this ministry and our channel. This is my full-time job now. And so it means a ton to me if you would partner with us and help us to continue to grow this community. Anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.